Hello, welcome and God bless everybody. Hope everybody is doing okay. Thank you for joining in. I hope my sound is loud and clear. I hope my sound is loud and clear, guys. Give me one in the text if you can hear me. <clears throat> Thank you for the confirmation. God bless. Nice to have you here. I see a couple of new people who just joined. Welcome. God bless you. God bless your families. Nice to have you on board. I know it's a little bit late in uh, some parts of the world, especially in Indonesia, Malaysia. But, you know, sometimes it's really hard to think about what the good time is to do a live show. So... Please forgive me for the people who are watching from Indonesia. I know it's very late and I know you really want us to do live shows. I know live shows are important in these days and not many, unfortunately, not many Christians, especially Christian apologists or Christian warriors are doing what we do. Uh, I mean, you can count them on your fingers, right? So, but anyway, I think... Uh, the Lord's work needs to be continuing, so we need to do this, guys. Uh, and I really try to think with everybody, uh, people who live in America, people who are living in Asia and Europe. So I know, bear with me, guys, but it is what it is. We can't be at the same time, at the same place, or let alone split ourselves in two to please everybody. <laughs> So, welcome guys, Carolina, God bless you, we made her a new admin, uh, Jesus loves with no limits, Carrie Ann, Edernas, Malaysian prophet, Edward, Mimosa, Longings of Jerusalem, Phil Herrera, Love and Light, Carrie Ann, Jason Palmer, Ravinder Kahal, Haloran Susan, Sean Kay, Welcome everybody, there are many of you here, God bless you, God bless your families. Let us start our today's live show. The topic of today is problems in Islam. There are actually many problems in Islam that Muslims actually do not deal with it. They don't look at them, they don't deal with them and that's really uh, devastating. It's a disaster. It's a disaster to not see the many problems in Islam, the problems in the teaching of the so-called prophet <laughs> of the Mohammedans. They don't look at them, they don't study them, they only recite, recite the Quran, memorize the Quran, and they think, hey, Islam is the truth. Really? I mean, even a kid can memorize a book. I mean, children, you know, they can learn languages very easy. They can learn to memorize books very easy, especially when you're young, you start with a young age. Does that mean when you memorize a book, does that mean you know the book? Do you understand the book? Certainly not. So, like I said, this is the topic of today. Before we actually start, guys, as always, I know it becomes a habit, but I think it's a good habit. We always start with a small prayer. So I want to ask you to pray with me so our live show will be blessed and we can be guided through today's live show by the Holy Spirit. So pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, Bless our beloved audience. Lord, thank you for your grace and because of the ultimate sacrifice of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, we are saved. And thank you for the amazing last year, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you for my lovely audience, supporters and subscribers who kept supporting us day in, day out for the last year. Please, Lord, bless them and bless their loved ones and their families. 
keep all of us Lord healthy and safe in 2020 so we can continue your work Lord father enfold us in your arms please help us not to lean on our own understanding but in everything acknowledge you Lord so that you can direct our words thoughts and actions Lord give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement deception lies or any taqiyya please Lord help us on you in all our ways Lord fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth without any error or any shame because only the truth and only the truth will prevail in the end Lord give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen welcome everybody as we mentioned on this live broadcast today we will have the opportunity to investigate problems in Islam and last but not least when I finish my teaching we will have a nice Q&A session with our guest in the live chat like always and hopefully we will have also Muslims who are watching I will open up my Skype now and hopefully you will call me if you call yourself a true Muslim that means you should not be ashamed of Islam and that means you can call me to refute me on my mentioned topics or sources that you will see on the screen in a couple of seconds so hopefully we will have some Muslims too who are watching sincere Muslims we are always looking for the sincere Muslims we don't hate Muslims right we don't hate we Christians do not hate Muslims we are even commanded to love you but I know you must hate us you must curse us and that's what you have been doing day in day out when you pray and you recite the first chapter of the Quran Al-Fatiha you repeat the curses of Allah on the Jews and the Christians but we do not do that we actually ask God to open your eyes for the truth and accept him as your Lord and Savior so to the people who joined in welcome God bless let us start the topic as we said the problems in Islam actually today we're going to prove to you that Muslims unfortunately are still in denial in 2020 most Muslims and I think more than 90% of the Muslims actually have no clue about Islam they are Muslims but they actually not really practicing Muslims they don't much about the Quran they certainly did not read the hadith to understand it they they just follow what their parents say they are born in a Muslim family uh, they are Muslim because they are born in a Muslim family they listen to their parents they listen maybe to their Imams and they do all kind of uh, haram things right that are <laughs> not halal according to Islam they use a lot of things that are created by kafir people like you and me they call us kafir right antum kafirun you are right non-believers you are not Muslims so but they don't know that Muhammad said don't copy the Jews and the Christians so why are you copying us why are you using our smartphones why are you using our internet why are you listening to our music right so you know there's a lot of hypocrisy in Islam um, they are in denial they are simply in denial I mean didn't Muhammad say to you don't uh, have pictures I mean your smartphones Muslims are full of pictures right when you look at the internet you open the first page is full of pictures and videos didn't your prophet say that this is haram akhi? angels will not visit your house when you have uh, pictures in them or drawings in them you, you, so Muslims are actually in denial even the biggest shiuch are in denial right 
they say, Akhi, don't, don't put pictures in yours. But when you go to a sheikh, his house, he has the biggest screen TV in his house, watching all kinds of movie, uh, documentaries and whatnot. Are those not pictures? <laughs> anyway, it is what it is, guys. One of the topics in this main topic are women in Islam. Women are actually victims in Islam. They are the biggest victims of this man-made cult. Women in Islam are nothing but sexual objects. They're actually nothing but sex dolls, fields to be plowed by Muslim men, right? They are only good for one thing, and that's putting the seed of males in them, creating babies, enjoying their private parts. And that's about it. There's truly really no love in Islam for women. There is no love for women in Islam. They are nothing but property. Exactly, Carolina. That's a good word to use. They are nothing but actually sex dolls. Even if you go to Islamic Jannah, what will the women have in Islam? What will the women have in Islam if they go to Jannah? They are nothing but sex dolls for the women for the man to be to please right the man will get the women and the women here on earth they have to wait for their turn when their husbands finish with the huris and when it's there when they are waiting in the line and it's their turn then they can uh, you know do boom boom with their uh, husbands so they're nothing, even in, in sex jenna of Allah, they're nothing but sex dolls with uh, big, uh, large uh, melons, right? Right, Muslims? They are all same age, equal age. They, they are going to be very beautiful. They will look very, very white, right? Even the Huris, you can see the narrow of their bones, right? The narrow of their bones. Everything is about the white color in Islam, right? The black color is the devil. The white is, uh, is uh, you know, is pure, brother. Brother, yeah, the X-ray women in the Islamic brothel of Allah, the sex jannah of Allah, right? You can see the narrow of their bones. The marrow of their bones. And Phil Herrera, yes, he just gave you the link. To the hadith where you can see that so women are actually unfortunately how can you accept this as a lady in islam man they are nothing but victims see how they are beating women are these women i mean a lady is like a flower man how can you beat a lady a woman a, a a woman like this look at her face man don't don't you get heartbroken? Are you not heartbroken when you see a woman beaten like this? Muslims, Muslim ladies, ladies who are watching, Muslim ladies who are watching, are you not heartbroken for your Muslim sisters to be beaten like this? Really? 2020 and you still accept that Islam allows women to be beaten? Huh? Lash them. Lash them, brother. And if they are married, let's say this lady, she maybe she committed adultery and she's a married woman, they will not only beat her, they will even stone her to death. What? Stoning to death, brother? Yes, brother. Those ayahs are not to be found anymore in the Quran because the God of Aisha ate those ayahs, but the ruling still exists. Why is the ruling still existing in Islam while, while the ayahs are gone? The, it, they were eaten by the God of Aisha? Allahu oh, Akbar. Yeah. Islam is nothing but exactly a barbaric, inhumane religion. And we know the fruits of Islam. And the proof is in front of you. Right, Muslims? I mean, if we go to the Quran, if we go to the Quran, chapter 4, and Nisa, ayah 34, we can see that if a male, a Muslim male, a Muslim husband, 
only fears. He only fears. He doesn't even see it, but he only fears that his wife is being disobedient. You are already allowed to beat her. Right? What dribuhunna? Right? What dribuhunna? Beat them. But brother, I learned from Muslims that there are steps, baby steps. Step A, step B, and step C. The final step is to beat them. No, brother, I will give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the steps in the Arabic. Brother? Baby steps, brother? What are you talking about, brother? No. The moment, if you are a male, you are a husband Muslim, and you fear that your wife is being disobedient with you, you can immediately beat her. There are nothing called steps. What's step one? What's step two? Why are you lying, Muslims? Exactly, Phil Horeira. There are no steps. And I will give you a thousand dollars if there's something called toothbrush in this. Show me the word miswak. So Muslims need to do all kind of mental gymnastics to lie to their women, lie to themselves, and try their taqiyya out, their luck out with us. But unfortunately, we are slowly and slowly and slowly becoming immune in 2020 for their deception and taqiyya. Where is the miswak? Where are the baby steps? Step one, step two, and then step three, finally be there. Where, are, where is it described in the Quran? No, Habibi, no. It clearly says, if you fear, if you fear that they are going to be disobedient, admonish them, and don't sleep with them anymore in the, in the bed, and then beat them. There are no steps. What steps are you talking about, man? You can do all these things. There are no steps. You can go immediately to the beating. Beat them. Only if you fear that they are going to be disobedient to you. You see how Islam is nothing but a sex religion, a religion created by Muhammad to control women. It's a man-made religion for men, for Muhammad and his penis. Debate me, Rob boy. Well, my Skype is open, you boy. You can call me. Boy. Call me. We are live. My Skype is open. Look. My Skype is open. You can call me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Yeah. This is why we call Islam the religion of the penis. Exactly, brother Phil Horea. It's nothing but the religion of penis for Muhammad and his Sahaba. And of course, Muhammad has the best of privileges. Call me, brother. My Skype ID is Dear Rob Christian. Show me where I'm lying. Brother. So as you see, this is chapter 4, I 34. Maybe uh, the admins can give you the link. You can study it. There's nothing called baby steps. Immediately, the moment you fear that they are going to be disobedient, you can immediately start to beat them. There's nothing called miswak. What miswak? What uh, shish kebab? What falafel? What hummus? As Christian Prince would have said. <laughs> So you see, where is the love in Islam for women, guys? Where is the love of for women in Islam? The male can use taqiyya with his wife, right? The male can lie to his wife. The wife can lie to her husband. Where is the love, brother? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me no more, no more. What is love in Islam? There is no love. Where is the love for women in Islam, brother? Women are nothing, like I sh said, women are nothing but objects. They are nothing but property and you can beat them if you fear disobedience from them. 
Yeah, and Allah, sorry, Muhammad is Allah actually. Muhammad is equally to Allah. Good that you mentioned it, Mr. Mulberry. Welcome, by the way. If we go to the Quran, we cannot show you this ayah enough. It's never enough to show you this ayah, this shirk in the Quran. Here's the ayah, guys. If we go to chapter 48, Surah Al-Fatih, ayah 9, it says, لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا If you read it, it means the following. You have to believe in Allah and His Rasul, His Messenger, and according to the grammar rules, I mean, if you are an Arabic speaker like me, you live in the Middle East, like I did, you went to school and you learned basic grammar rules, basic grammar rules of the Arabic, you need to know that the last mentioned person, in this case Muhammad, the Rasul, every word that come after are addressed for the last person and the last person alone. In this case, Muhammad. So you have to assist Muhammad in battle. You have to honor and respect Muhammad. And you have to glorify Muhammad. Do tasbih for Muhammad every morning and evening. You have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Do you see it? Who? The Apostle. Why the Apostle, brother Rob? Brother, why, brother? Please explain again, brother, for the people who didn't catch it. According to Arabic grammar rules, in a sentence like this, the last mentioned person, according to the Arabic grammar rules, only the last mentioned person, all the words that come after, in this case the highlighted words here, are reserved for the last person and the last person alone. So, tasbih is for Muhammad. Bam! Do you see how Muhammad is equal with his Allah? Here, Muhammad created a huge disaster. Here, Muhammad is asking Muslims to commit shirk and glorify him every morning and evening. Here, you see clear evidence from the Quran. This is Quran, by the way. You see clear evidence from the Quran that Muhammad actually wanted to be worshipped glorified every morning and evening bam that was the plan yes that was the plan take notes people here muhammad placed himself on the same level of allah this is why muhammad wanted to be in the shahada right can you recite the shahada without the name of muhammad no brother the shahada on itself is nothing but blasphemy. It's nothing but associating partners with Allah. In this case, Muhammad. So this is why many Muslims lately, many Muslims lately who are turning away from hadith, they have become Quran only Muslims. They actually confirm, they agree that the shahada is nothing but shirk. Why? Because you cannot put a human besides Allah because you are associating partners with Allah. But Muslims, like we said, Muslims are in denial. Right? Muslims are in denial and this is a huge, huge problem in Islam. Shirk is actually everywhere in Islam. Right? Shirk is everywhere in Islam. Yeah, brother, we don't believe in the hadith because, you know, the hadith make Muhammad look bad. We turn away from hadith and we become Quran only Muslims, brother. And even the shahada is nothing but blasphemy. It's nothing but shirk associating partners with Allah, according to them. Right? So, like we said, guys, women are nothing but sex objects. They are nothing but property. They are nothing but objects, sexual objects. In Islam and the moment as a male, as a husband, you fear disobedience, you are allowed to beat them. And by the way, the maswaq that they love to talk about is actually a very long, long root like this. It's root, root of a tree, right? Root, that's what a maswaq is, right? 
That's what a miswak is, right? So it's actually a very long route, and you know how root. Uh, try to beat someone with a root of a tree. Let's see if it's going to hurt or not. <laughs> you see, they beat the women like they are animals. Remember the hadith where Aisha said, I see, you know, when a woman came to complain to Muhammad, she said, I see that her skin is more green, her skin of the lady from the beating, is more green than her clothes. What? The skin of the lady who came to complain because her husband was beating her turned more green from the beating of her husband than her clothes. And this is according to Aisha, guys, the mother of the believers. And what did Aisha say? What did Aisha say? Women in Islam have really a hard time right women in islam actually have a hard hard time and it's true story women in islam have no res respect from the males and they dare to say islam karram al uh, the ladies right islam actually gave respect to women al islam karram al imra'a yeah right Beating a woman is uh, is uh, respect, guys. Um, someone uh, in Indonesia, guys, someone from Indonesia asked me a question. We in Indonesia, because we have been living for a very long time with Muslims, we as Christians from Indonesia, should we use the term Allah, right? Because that's what they, I think they write it like this. Allah means God in Islam. According, sorry, according to the Indonesian language. No, don't use the word Allah because Allah does not mean God. Right? Ilah in Arabic, and you got it from the Arabic, Ilah means God in Arabic. Right? So why are you using the, na the Islamic name of the Islamic moon idol? No, Allah is not God. Mimosa, you have been fooled. Sorry to say. Mimosa, you are wrong. Allah is not God. No, I just explained it. Ilah, the word Ilah means God in Islam. Sorry, in Arabic. In Arabic. So Allah is the name. Allah is the name of the Islamic God. In this case, the moon idol of Islam, right? He's the moon idol. Muhammad adopted him from the pre-Islamic era because, don't forget, even the father of Muhammad, have you ever asked your, uh, yourself this question, people? When we ask Muslims, what is the name, what is the name of the father of Muhammad? What is the name of the father of Muhammad, people, according to Muslims? They can't actually prove that he's his real father, right? What is the name of the father of Muhammad? Abdullah, exactly. What if we dissect this name? Abd, Abd means slave, right? Allah is the Islamic moon idol, right? The name. So how, how? Did the father of Muhammad had the name of Allah in his name, but he died as a mushrik. He died as a blasphemer. He died as a pagan. Muslims, you need to deal with these problems in Islam. Right? How can he have the name of Allah in his name, the father of Muhammad, but he died as a mushrik? Well, here is why, because Allah already existed before Islam. He, he was the supreme moon idol of the pagan Quraysh. And Allah had three daughters, Allah al -Uzza wa al -Manat, that used to carry the prayers of the pagans all the way to the supreme moon idol, Allah, because he already existed. And he was the god of the pagan Quraysh, the tribe of Muhammad himself in Mecca. Bam! Hello Andy, welcome my friend. God bless you. Nice to have you. So you see guys, 
Muslims, you need to deal with these problems in Islam. How can the father of Muhammad be called Abdullah, but at the same time, he is the slave of Allah. Abdullah means the slave of Allah, right? The servant of Allah, the slave of Allah. How did he serve Allah? How did, how did he, well, how can he be called the slave of Allah, but at the same time die as a mushrik? According to Islam, the father of Muhammad is in hellfire because a Sahabi came to Muhammad and he asked him, can you tell me where my father is? He asked Muhammad, can you tell me where my father is? Muhammad turned to answer the, 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 his companion, right, who asked him this question, where is my father, O Prophet of Islam? Muhammad turns and he says, your father and my father, says Muhammad, are both in hellfire. Bam! Yeah, and not only that, exactly either Nas, Muhammad cried for his mother, Amina, and he asked Allah to forgive her, and Allah did not forgive her, and also his mother is burning in hellfire. Both his uncles are burning in hellfire, right? The, that uncle that was sexually abusing Muhammad. Remember the hadith, uh, sorry, remember the teaching, the live show that we gave you, how Muhammad was being sexually abused by his own uncle, that told him to come and sleep with him naked in bed. That same uncle never accepted Muhammad to be the prophet in Islam. He rejected him, the other uncle rejected So basically his whole family, <laughs> his whole family died are as mushrik, right? Do you, do you see the problems, guys? Why? Ask yourself this question. Why two, why two uncles rejected Muhammad as prophet? Because they knew Muhammad is a scam. He was copying from legend stories. And Muhammad was accused over and over in the Quran from at least three ayahs. He was accused to be nothing but a poet. He was nothing but a stealer of legend stories and poetry and he was even called the Majnoon poet. Majnoon poet. What does Majnoon means? A madman. Do you see it? And to be more specific, Majnoon, guys, Muhammad was called Majnoon, that was his nickname. Majnoon means someone who is possessed by jinn what brother yes muhammad was actually being accused of being possessed by jinn and that's what happened to him he was actually possessed by satan and he was under the control of satan by the black magic of satan brother what uh ed says isn't a poet supposed to be illiterate yes ads Yes, Muhammad was actually illiterate. Muhammad was not illiterate. Muhammad asked for pen and paper, according to Sahih al-Bukhari report, according to the hadith, Sahih. Muhammad asked for pen and paper to write something down. And we can even go to the Quran and show you that Muhammad was actually not illiterate. Because the word Ummi can have many meanings. And the correct meaning of it is someone, someone, who is spiritually dead. Why? Ask yourself this question. Why are Jews and Christians not called Ummiyun? We are called people of the book, right? Not Ummiyun. Right? Because Muhammad was spiritually dead and he did not receive the book of Allah yet. This is why he was called Ummi. Not because he was actually illiterate, no. He was spiritually dead. And the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, were not spiritually dead. They already received the book. This is why they are not called Ummiyun. Do you see it? So Muhammad could actually write and read Arabic. And he had access to the Bible from Waraka. Waraka was translating the, the Injil, the Gospel, from the Aramaic to the Arabic. And he was helping Muhammad with fabricating ayahs. Muhammad had access to books, like we mentioned yesterday, to the treaties of the great set, where it says that Jesus was not crucified, right, on the cross. 
Muhammad took that story and he implemented it in chapter 4, ayah 157. Right? As a merchant, you can have access to many things. You can have access to books, to medical books. Right? Remember that teaching when we showed you. Remember the teaching when we mentioned Galen. Remember the Galen story, guys? Remember the Galen story? How Muhammad actually stole the works of Galen because the works of Galen used to circle around, right? And one of the Sahaba was a medical doctor. He was in Persia where there was a university where the works of Galen were being taught and this Sahabi after he became a medical doctor he went to Mecca he became a Sahabi he became a pay, <laughs> sorry a, a, a um, companion of Muhammad and he even married one of the family members of Muhammad right and Muhammad got the works of Galen about the alaqa right the congealed blood that galen was talking about and how bones were being covered by flesh which is a lie modern science teaches that bones and flesh grow simultaneously together right so muhammad stole all kind of stories from here there because he had access to them yeah, a medical doctor is the ancestor of Zachar Naik. <laughs> so guys, I already wanted to share something with you. After my debate yesterday, I had a couple of debates with Muslims. Where are the Muslims, by the way, right now? Yesterday, my phone was hot, ringing over and over. I think today we are out of Muslims. Maybe they are praying to, uh, to the moon idol. I don't know. Who knows? Yesterday, my phone was ringing like crazy. And today there are no... Uh, Adamu just called me. Adamu, you are that guy who keeps calling me. Right? You are from Nigeria with a bad internet. You steal the Wi-Fi of your neighbors. Let me call him back. Let me give him a chance. Yesterday I tried to call him back. So let me try it again. Let's see how his connection is today. Answer, brother. Hello? Hello, Rob. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. How are you, Adamu Bakari? How are you? Hello? Brother, I can hear you. Are you again using the Wi-Fi of your neighbors, brother? Come on, brother. See guys, it's always the same story with this guy. I'm going to rebuke you, Rob Christian. You're finished, Rob Christian, but I'm uh, sorry, I'm still stealing the Wi-Fi of, of my neighbors. Anyway, let me continue, guys. So this guy, he called me yesterday too. Right, he called me yesterday and we had a debate about a couple of topics. And he says the following, he commented after my live show, in the comments section and he said battle slayer quote unquote says yet again rob has shown he cannot have a discussion with a muslim who disagrees with him well do you want me to agree with you <laughs> do you want me to agree with you <laughs> he uses sources that work in his advantage advantage are you talking about the quran the the quran is now i yesterday we only use quran and hadith right sahih hadith so are you telling me that the Quran, the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, like Sahih Muslim, are working in my advantage? Well, that's great. Guys, do you see the logic here? According to this guy, the Quran and the Hadith work in my advantage. Well, that's great, man. That makes my work really easy. That's what we are after. We are going to your Quran. We are going to your hadith to spank your fake prophet, the lies of your prophet, the self-proclaimed prophet. So, of course, I'm using the Quran as 
my source and I use the hadith as my source to spank Islam, to spank the teaching of Muhammad, to spank Muhammad himself. What do you want me to use uh, outside sources to spank your prophet? You see the logic of the Muslims, guys. Oof, oof, oof. Uh -huh. We need to stop use Quran and Hadith, guys, to spank Muhammad, according to this Muhammad in here. You see the logic, guys? You see the logic? Hey, Abdul Halik, how are you, my friend? Nice to have you. Marcus, Jason Palmer, welcome all of you. Um, so, and this guy continues. Look at the, look at the smart Abdul here. Smart Abdul. So he says the following, point number one. Right? First disagreement he had was regarding the word to a Faitani. Here is the Corpus Quran website showing meaning of each word of the Quran and its grammatical root. For those interested, check out the page in the link. Well, you should check it out because this is Sahih International. <laughs> what did we say about Sahih International, guys, last time? It is written by three women, and we know that Muhammad called women half brained. It's the most used. Translation in the world for the English Quran because 90% of the Muslims don't know Arabic, more than 90% don't know Arabic, so you are dependent on translation. And false translation made by three women, actually one woman and two of, of the other women actually were printing, right? One woman translated it. Sahih International basically goes like this one woman translated it. And the rest of the two women were printing and doing all kinds of other things, right? So it's not just one woman. That, what did Muhammad say? Women are half-brained. Women are naqisoon and al-aql, right? They are naqisoon and al-aql. So because they are, there is much missing parts in their brain, right? They are brain deficient. So why do you... Trust women with your salvation, with the truth. Why do you trust one woman with your salvation, my friend? We are talking about your salvation. We are talking about your soul. Right? Yeah. Karian says, I thought that women in Islam are half-brained. Exactly. So why are you still going to Sahih International? I mean, guys, you can open this link. You will see that he's talking about Sahih International. Let me show you. Let me open the link. Open the link in a new tab. Look, this is the link. I made it bigger for you guys. Right? This is Sahih International. Let me scroll. And this is the word that he's talking about. This filthy liar translation is talking about that there were fate enemies raised me. And if you scroll down, bam, Sahih International. Sahih International saying that it means you took me up, you raised me up. See, it's Sahih International, brother. You see this guy? You truly have no shame, you have no dignity. So you're still asking me to go to Sahih International to understand the meaning of Tawafaitini. Brother, I'm an Arab, brother. I don't need to use any translation. I know the meaning. Imagine, guys, you tell to a Chinese, you say to a Chinese, no, you don't know the meaning of the Chinese word. I am going to teach you, even if I don't know Chinese. Guys, give me a second, okay? Give me a second. I'll be right back.
Hello guys, I'm back. Um, I had someone at my door, so I need to deal with that. I had to deal with that. Again, let us go back. So this guy says, you need to go to the translation, brother, because I know better than you, brother. I may be a Pakistani or I'm from Afghanistan, but I know Arabic better than you, brother. Even if I don't speak Arabic, brother, here's a Sahih International link, brother. Do you see it? Brother, I'm an Arab speaker. Are you teaching me my own language? <laughs> Please don't open your door. Uh, it's, it was a family member, man, telling me not to open my door for my own family. <laughs> anyway, so and then point two, guys. Point two, we are going to address point number one. And then he goes to point two. But let me, I think it's better to first deal with point number one, right? Point number one. This is the ayah that we were talking about, guys. For the people who joined and yet could not watched yesterday's live show this is the ayah that we were debating about and this is the word tawafaytani this is the translation of shakir shakir here is the only guy that I could find who did not use taqiyya mr abdul abdul what's your name battle slayer are you telling us that shakir is a liar did Shakir lie in his translation, brother? Yeah, Shakir is, in this case, is the good translation. Is Shakir a liar, brother? I dare you to call him a liar. Um, no voice? I think you're the only guy. I uh, need to refresh. Let me put it in text. You tell the guys, tell this guy to refresh. Samkan Muhammad, you need to refresh. It's your side, okay? Refresh. So, the word is tawafaytani, and it means you caused me to die. Who is talking, guys? Anyone who is talking here? It's Isa, right? Isa is the one talking. And Isa is saying to Allah, he's talking to Allah, you, Allah, caused me to die. So here, Isa, who they call Jesus, they say, they claim this is Jesus. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so here, Jesus, Isa, confirms his death on the cross. You caused me to die. Tawafaytani. Tawafaytani, right? This is the same word that the Abdul is talking about, right? Tawafaytani. This is the transliteration. Right? This is the transliteration. And this is the word. Now, if we go to Google Translate, brother, Prophet Google, peace be upon him, brother? Yes. If we type the following, he passed away, we get Tawafa. Tawafa. Let me play the recording, guys. Put your headsets on. Yeah, the previous phrase also confirmed. Exactly. Look. Tawafa. What? Tawaffa. 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 Did you hear? Maybe you didn't hear it. Tawaffa. Tawaffa. <laughs> he passed away. Tawaffa. Huwa Tawaffa. He passed away. So how did passing away, dying, how did that become raised up? You see how Muslims are getting busted now? But brother, Sahih International brother, that is written by one Muslim comfort woman, she says different brother. Yeah, well, I, I don't care. Are you telling me Muslims cannot lie? <laughs> are you telling me Muslims cannot lie? Islam is full of lies. Islam is nothing but deception. Muhammad, his Allah, is nothing but a deceiver. And he's actually the best of all deceivers. Khairul makirin. Allahu khairul makirin. Allah is the best of all deceivers. So are you telling me that Muslims cannot use taqiyya to deceive their audience? Uh, yeah, battle slayer. Uh, good that you are in the text. We're talking about you, actually. No, 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 brother. Brother. Brother, the proof is in front of you, brother. 
And to make it even more worse, Abdul, look at the screen. Abdul, look at the screen. This is Google Translate again. I raise someone up. Arfa shakhs, right? Watch. Listen carefully, guys. So, guys, tawafaitani. Tawaffa means someone passes away. He passes away. And when you're going to raise someone up, you're going to say arfa. Brother, brother, brother. So according to Prophet Google, peace be upon him, translate, it says to a fate and he means cause me to die. And Shakir confirms in his translation. And Rafa'tani means raised me up. So you see the difference, guys? So when you raise someone up, you, you, you cause him to die. Now, do you see it, guys? And the proof is in front of you. Don't say Rob Christian is lying. We showed you how Rafa'tani means raised me up. Rafa'a, Rafa'a, raising something up. Tawaffaytani, Tawaffa, huwa Tawaffa, he died. He passed away. So how did passing away, causing someone to die, become raising up? I mean, come on, you are the Abdul, please teach me in my, my own language. I am an Arab, teach me my own language. Well, you are nothing but a Pakistani boy. Brother, you don't know Arabic, brother. I know Arabic, brother. I know Arabic, brother. You don't know Arabic, brother. Do you see it? Do you need to do more mental gymnastics to prove your point, brother? Yes, we, we are allowed to use taqiyya, brother, to deceive ourselves because we are not Arabs, right? We are not Arabs. We can, we are allowed, right? This is, this is the ayah that you're talking about, brother. Look, look, look. You're, you're making it wor more worse for yourself, brother. This is chapter 39, I have 42. Battle Slayer, you said this. Let me copy what you said. This is chapter 39, I have 42. You're making it more worse for yourself, man. Brother, please, man. For the love of God. For the love of truth, you are making it even more worse for myself. No, it says he passed away. <laughs> you see it? Yet tawaffa nafs, Allah takes their souls to death. Because when you take someone's soul, you die. Brother, you are even making it more shish kebab for yourself, brother. You are even making it even more worse for yourself. Do you see it? Death. When, you, when, I, when your soul is taken from your body, you die. It's over. When your soul is taken away from your body, you die. And the proof is in front of you. Death. You are dead. Brother. You are dead without your soul. Right? Now he becomes silent for Sabil Allah, brother. See? He went silent. He went mute. Yet tawaffa, yeah, he is dying. <laughs> right? And nafs, and nafs is soul, yes. So Allah, right, calls you to die and he takes your soul. He takes your soul, that means you die. <laughs> What's your point, brother? <laughs> so, brother, you need to accept the fact that what fate and he means cause me to die. Your soul is gone, you die. And Rafa'tani, Rafa'a, Rafa'a raised me up. Again, this is passed me away. Let me play the recording. Tawaffa. Watch, he died, right? He passed away. Tawaffa. 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 Do you hear it? And raising someone up. Arfa'u. 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 
ارفع رفع ارفع رفع توفى cause me to die deal with this brother here like we said in chapter 5 chapter 5 ayah 117 jesus actually confirms this that to make it even more worse brother if you go to chapter 19 ayah 33 right jesus speaking from the cradle as a baby infant he says as a baby he's talking brother jesus talking as a baby in islam yes brother Muhammad actually stole this from the Gospel of Thomas, the infancy Gospel of Thomas. Right? This is nothing but copy paste from the infancy Gospel of Thomas. And he says, And peace be upon me the day I was born. Jesus as a baby talking. And on the day I die, when I grow up, and on the day I am raised to life. So here, Jesus is confirming his birth. Confirming his death when he grows up because he's talking as a baby from the cradle and on the day I am raised to life. So his birth, his death and resurrection is being confirmed to confirm from this ayah to this ayah, right? Back to back, one ayah, back to back with another ayah that Jesus actually died. Allah caused him to die. This is why we don't accept liars like you, Mr. Battle Slayer. You're actually a slayer of your own truth. The truth is in front of you on the screen and you are the slayer of the truth. You are not slayer of the battle. You are slayer of the truth. You are not a slayer of falsehood. You are actually slayer of your own truth that is in front of you. So your own name is actually you should change your name to truth slayer not falsehood slayer guys battle means falsehood right so change your name to truth slayer that's your that actually fits your name more your personality more right Uh, Phillips is asking, quote unquote, Rob Christian, didn't Khadija tell Muhammad his revelation was from Allah? If a woman only have half of a brain according to Islam, how can her opinion be taken seriously? Exactly, Phillips. Exactly. You just hit the nail on the coffin of Muhammad, the fake prophet of Islam. We always say islam is created on the assumption of khadija why because khadija did not see jibril she did not hear jibril but she was the one who told muhammad no no it's not a demon because remember muhammad himself for his from his own mouth go to the sira go to the sira nabawiya right the biography the early biography by ibn hisham ibn ishaq you will see that muhammad says and i quote muhammad says and i quote a demon touched me. What? A demon touched me, says Muhammad. When he goes to his wife, Khadija says, no, no, no. After doing a lap dance for her, she asked him to sit on her lap, sit on the other lap, and she took off his clothes then. She did ask him, do you still, still see the creature, i.e. Jibreel? No, I don't see him. Then that means automatically this cannot be a demon. This must be an angel. You see how Islam is created on a assumption of Khadija, on the opinion of Khadija. So don't we always say the, the mother of all pop-ups, I don't want to say the word, the mother of all pop-ups is an assumption. Assumption is the mother of all pop-ups, eh, you know, pop-ups, right? Assumption. This is a very well known saying. Right? Right? Like this, as you see in the live chat. And Islam is created on the assumption of Khadija. Khadija did not see Jibril. Waraka did not see Jibril. No one saw Jibril. So, how do you trust Muhammad, Muslims? Shouldn't you put Muhammad to the test before actually saying that he's a prophet? Hmm? Do we have any Muslim who dares to call me brother? 
I missed a call. Okay, let me call this guy back. I think he's a Muslim. Manusia Biasa. One, two, three. Pick up the phone, brother. Hello? hello? Yeah, hello. Welcome. Hello? Mute, you, mute YouTube, please. Mute YouTube. Oh, he hang up. Uh huh? Uh huh? Why you hang up, brother? Brother? Let me call him back. Yeah, I heard a baby too. Yeah. He has a picture that looks like a Muslim. Hmm. I think maybe his kid is screaming or crying. That's why he cannot pick up the phone. I don't know. Call me back, uh, Abdul. Call me back. Uh, he's, he, he looks like he's active. You see green spot here? He's active. Active now. So maybe he's playing a game. <clears throat> okay, so guys, Jesus actually, the Islamic Jesus, confirms his death. Shakir is right. The other translators are liars. Don't tell me Shakir is a liar. I dare you to call me and say Shakir is a liar. Mr. Truth Slayer. You are the Truth Slayer. So he respanked him, okay? Again, you got spanked, you got served. You cannot handle the truth, boy. Boy, you Muslims, you boys, you cannot handle the truth, like Mimi Hijab would have said. Boy! <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just acting like Mimi Hijab, one of the Islamic heroes of uh, 2020. If we go to point number two, all right, if we go to point number two. So we prove to you guys that this gentleman has no clue about the Arabic language. He is dependent on translation. The Wafat enemies caused me to die. Rafat enemies raised me up. So if Allah was the best communicator ever, if he is actually God, as you claim, he should have not used the word Tawafaytani. Right? He should have used Rafatani in the Quran. But we know the Quran is the book, man-made book, created by men like you and me. And when you're going to be men who create a so-called uh, book of Allah, you're going to make mistakes. The right word is Rafatani, to raise me up, not to have faith any. So here we just confirm the death of Jesus on the cross in the Quran. What's the meaning of taqiyya? It's deception. You can lose lies to deceive someone who is in front of you basically. You can use lies with your own wife in Islam. If you are a Muslim, you can lie to your wife. Your wife can lie to you. If you are actually in war, you can use deception. That's what taqiyya means. Deception, lies. Okay, let me continue to point number two, guys. Pay attention, guys. This is still the same truth slayer. He is the slayer of the truth. He doesn't care about True, uh, truth, this is why he's slaying truth. So second, he says, I, he, he's talking about me, right? He's talking about me. I'm quoting this guy. He says, second, Rob Christian displays as a Sahih Hadith from Imam Muslim about Allah removing those who sin from existence. That's true. He used this to explain there is no free will. That's also true. There is no free will in Islam. Not sure how he makes that conclusion. Well, if you are not allowed to sin in Islam and Allah will remove you from existence, that means there, there, your free will goes out of the window. Poof! There is no free will. If Allah does not allow you to be a righteous Muslim, he will remove you out of existence. Where is your free will to go against him? Can I decide to go against Allah? No, because Allah is going to remove me from existence. Why are there still 3 billion Christians out there? And I'm not talking about the atheists, the Buddhists and whatnot. Why did Allah not remove us from ex existence? I mean, we are the biggest sinners. We are associating right, partners with Allah and whatnot. Anyway, forget about it. 
So since he reverted to the topic to Jesus being called a pure young boy, Ghulam and Zakiya, yes, he is pure, he is free from sins. And we're going to show you that. Further, he argued, why did Allah remove Jesus from existence? No, I said, and you are a liar. I did not say that. You're a liar. I said, why did Allah not remove? So here you should have put not here in between. You see guys, how he's lying about me. He's putting words in my mouth. Do you see guys, are you still with me? Are you still with me guys? Are you still with me? Okay. So you see, he's now putting words in my mouth. No, I did not say. I did not say this. I said, I argued with you and, and I asked you why Allah did not remove Jesus. Not why Allah removed Jesus. No, no, no. Allah should have removed Jesus because Jesus never sinned. And he's now he's the only guy who is with Allah in an in, in Islamic brothel called Jannah. Muhammad is in his grave, right? Muhammad is in his grave. He's not in Jannah. Only person in Jannah, Islamic Jannah, is only Jesus. Why? Because he's free from sins. So here Muhammad created a huge disaster for you Muslims in the Hadith. But of course, Rob Christian only cherry picks what he likes. No, you are putting words in my mouth. You're a liar. Now you're being a deceiver. And as we showed you, you don't know Arabic. You are dependent on false translations. Yeah, Abdul, where is Isa? Isa is in Jannah, brother. Why, brother? Because Allah wanted him to be in Jannah, brother. But why? Allahu A'lam. No, brother. Allah took Isa. He killed him and he took him up. Right? He killed him. Caused him to die. And he took him up because he's free from sins. Satan never touched him. Right? Someone is trying to call me. Okay. Let me call him back. Again, I think this is the Indonesian guy. Let me call him back. See, I think they are playing games, man. Why are you playing games, Abdul? Why are you not picking up the phone? Calling me and I hang up, acting as if you want to debate me. This guy called me too, let's see. Keep deceiving yourself, brother. Kids, man. This guy is uh, the one who's stealing Wi-Fi. He's from Nigeria. See? His, his internet connection is even bad. You can't he hear even the ringing tone. Coward. Last time I called this guy. This Indonesian guy. Pick up, Abdul, pick up. Kids. You're a kid. Sit down, boy. Sit down. You're a kid. So, as you see, guys, this guy, to make it even more worse, let me go to the Hadith, guys. Mm, was this the Hadith that I wanted to talk about? No. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, guys, he's claiming that Jesus is not pure. He's without, he's, he's actually a sinner. That's what he said, right? Jesus is not sinless. You liar, you have no shame, you have no dignity because you are calling your own prophet a liar, Mr. Battle Slayer, Mr. The Slayer of Truth. <laughs> this is Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim, hadith number 23, 66a. Let me give you the link, guys. I hope you're still with me. All right. Reported by Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, right, who, who used to come and eat. You know, this guy only came to, for food. Abu Huraira, the, the, the benefiter, right? Reported that Allah's messenger saying, No child, so Muhammad is say, saying, No child is born 
but he is pricked by Satan. So Satan touched the baby, right? Take notes, guys. And he begins to weep. The baby begins to cry of the pricking of Satan because Satan pricked him, touched him, right? Do you see it? Except, except who? The son of Mary, i.e. Isa, who they call Jesus. Isa and his mother. Did you catch it? So here, according to Muhammad, that you call a liar, Mr. Battle Slayer, you just called your prophet a liar. You called your prophet a liar for saying that the son of Mary, Jesus, Isa, is free from sins because only he and his mother were not, were not touched by Satan. Thank you. Where do you think Muhammad got this from? From the Holy Bible. Copy paste. Yeah, so his statement, the statement of this Abdul who does not speak Arabic, he just actually claimed that his prophet is a liar. While his own prophet claims in the Sahih Hadith, Sahih Muslim, that according to Muhammad, Jesus is free from sins. He is not touched by Satan. You filthy liar, you have no shame, you have no dignity. And on top of that, you just called your prophet a liar. Thank you, you are making my job much easier. Here is a clap clap for you, brother. You are doing a great job, brother, calling your own prophet a liar, brother. Continue, you are doing a great job. Good job, boy, good job. Now sit down. Give yourself a slap on the back, brother. You are doing amazing job, brother. You see it? Except the son of Mary was not touched by Satan. So he is free from sin. Was Muhammad touched by Satan? Yes, brother. Oh, this is why the Islamic Isa, only he is with Allah in Jannah. Muhammad is dead in his grave, brother. This is why Muhammad is still in his grave, brother. And Isa is with Allah, brother. Because Isa is free from sins, brother. Brother. But uh, what does this guy say? You are using Hadith and Quran for your own advantage. Well, what, what should I use? You're a Muslim. Should I go to the book of the, of the Mormons? Should I go to the book of uh, the Jehovah Witnesses or should I go to your books? You're a Muslim, Abdul. You see the logic of this guy? <laughs> brother, stop hurting my feelings, brother. To make it even more worse for Battle Slayer, uh, I mean the Truth Slayer. I hope he's still watching. I think he's crying. He's silent, fi sabil Allah. Suddenly he's silent. Where are you, man? Why did you stop texting in the chat? Why are you not calling me? So he became silent fi sabil Allah, right? For Allah's sake, because Muhammad is spanking him. You're actually calling your own prophet a liar and you are disagreeing with your own prophet. That's okay. We love to see that. We love to show everybody that Muslims are in denial and calling their own prophet a liar. Keep doing that. You're doing great, brother. Guys, you see why I... Uh, Picked up this topic today. Problems in Islam. Right? You see why? This is why. So we showed you, guys, that Satan did not touch Isa. Right? And we showed you that Isa confirmed his death from two Quranic ayahs. Two, not one, two. Chapter 19 and chapter 5. Yeah, I think he's crying in the corner. Yeah, sorry for causing you to cry. That's not my intention. My intention and my mission, guys, guys, for the people who are listening, who are here, who are watching and listening to our live show, we actually don't do this because we, we are not haters of Muslims. We don't hate Muslims. We hate the Islamic teaching because the Islamic teaching, Islam, actually kills souls it kills souls what did jesus say guys 
Jesus said, don't fear people who hurt your body. Fear the one, i.e. Allah, i.e. Satan. Because Allah and Satan are nothing but the same guy. And the agent of Satan, Muhammad. Fear them because they can kill your soul. Don't fear anyone who might hurt your body. Maybe they will hurt you. Maybe they will kick you out if you leave Islam. Right? Your own parents might kick you out of your house. Right? If you denounce Muhammad. And the proof is in front of you again today. Don't fear anyone. But fear the ones who might kill your soul. Because your soul might end up in hellfire if you reject the truth. And only the truth can set you free. Not Rob Christian, not anyone else. You don't need me. The only thing I can do is be a messenger. I can deliver you the right message. Not the message of Islam that have been taught to you all your life. They use taqiyya on you. They fooled you, brother. Yes, Islam is a soul killer. Exactly, Tony. Exactly my point. Again, don't fear the ones who might hurt the body, your body. Fear the ones who might hurt your soul, i.e. Islam. The agent of Satan of Islam. Uh, Shayna B. Shayna B is saying, Rob Christian, another problem, I saw a video from the Bosnian boy, Aminia, that kid that will never ever call me, coward, about Quran chapter 9, ayah 31, hiding behind Arabic grammar and syntax to explain the blunder away. Can you refute this claim? Yes, very easy actually. We have done so and we can do it again, no problem. If that's your wish, your wish is my command, brother. Chapter 9, Surah at tawbah Ayah 31. Here is the Ayah. In this chapter, guys, there are huge disasters. Especially in this Ayah. In this Ayah alone, had at least two disasters. Are you, are you with me, guys? Are you with me? Do you have your pens and papers out? You have to take notes. Yeah, Quran chapter 9, 31 and chapter 48, ayah 9 destroyed Islam, exactly. Showing that Islam is nothing but shirk. The Quran is shirk. The Quran teaches shirk. And lies. They, who? The Christians. Look at the lie about the Christians, guys. Do you worship your rabbis and monks? Any Christian here? Christians in the, in the chat? Christians in the audience who are listening? Do you, Christians, worship your rabbis and monks? Your scholars and monks? Do you do that? To the Christians, do you Christians worship your rabbis and monks? No. You see, Ali, I only see no. So, are you telling me the Quran is lying about Christians? Brother... Brother, are you telling me that the Quran is lying about you? As an ex-Christian, someone is ex-Christian here, Andrew Martin is saying no. So even the ex-Christian here, he's a dear atheist. Andrew, I think you're an agnostic or an atheist, right? But you're a dear brother of us. We love you, my friend. I hope someday you will accept Christianity and Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Even an ex-Christian here says no. Do you see it? So here, the writer of the Quran is lying about the Christians. Bam! Problem number one. Take notes. Take notes. Here the Quran in chapter 9, ayah 31 is lying about Christians. Shame on you, Muhammad. We know you are the fabricator of the Quran. Shame on you for lying about us. So they have taken their lords, sorry, their doctors and monks for lords beside Allah. Which is a lie. We don't do that. You filthy liar, Muhammad. Why are you lying about Christians, man? Do you have any shame? No, brother. I don't have shame. This is why I created Islam in the first place. Aha! I know I understand, brother. Battle Slayer, call me, bro brother. Call me, call me. Call me, brother. 
Okay, let me go. This is the same guy You're that up. we are spanking. Hello? Hey Rob, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? How are you doing, man? I'm good. <laughs> did you well, like well, Did you like the well, refutation, brother? Uh, well, I'm sorry, I, I didn't watch the video. I just oh, I, I just got on. Okay. I just got on now. Hmm. And uh, <clears throat> and I was listening to you uh, discussing the 31st ayah from Surah Tawbah. Yeah, chapter nine, ayah 31. All right, right, of course. Okay. So um, <clears throat> you know the you know the hadith of the ex-Christian who comes to the Prophet Sallallahu and says that we never we never worshipped our rabbis and monks. Yes. And then he said that the fact that they change the rules, they change the laws and you obey them, that itself is considered worship. Which, 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 which one? Which one, brother? Which one? Ayah 31. Brother, show me one Trinitarian Christian who says that <laughs> you have to worship him. One. One church father. No. No, no. Give I didn't me one church. No, these are our scholars and monks, right? Show me one monk who claims that you that we Christians have to worship him. No, you don't have to. No, that's that's. This is the thing. The ayah is talking about how the Christians and the Jews took their rabbis and monks as lords beside Allah. And what does right? that mean? What does that besides Allah mean? What does that mean? Associate yes, associating partners with Allah, right? Right, right. Thank exactly, you. Yes. Thank you. Let me salute you, my friend. Thank you. So you sure. just agreed right. that so, here the Quran is lying about Christians. Thank you. No, I did. No, I did not complete. You cannot just stop me in the middle and say I, I'm completed with my statement. How? So can I proceed? Go ahead. Yes. So the, the so when the uh, when one of the Christians who accepted Islam came to the Prophet Muhammad and and he brought the same thing that you are saying now to the Prophet Muhammad that we never took our rabbis and monks as gods. Yes. He came and made the same complaint that you are making now. The Prophet Muhammad said that, didn't you follow the rules and the laws that they changed? What laws, you take them what as laws, your authority? What laws have they changed? Go ahead, show me the laws let that me, they have Let changed. me give an example. Let me give an example. Now, Paul Paul, Paul came and ab abolished all the all the laws of the, no. uh, what? Of the mosaic book. That's books. not true. That's not didn't true. You? No. Do you, do, you, no, do you guys Jesus follow the himself, mosaic law? No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Listen carefully. You have no clue. You have, and you want to change topic. You want clearly you are. You I'm, I'm, not, I'm not changing yes. topic. You yes, you, me. you are. You, you are changing. Me. First of all, first of no, all. No, no, no. You asked no, me. No, no, no. Let you me address me. you. Let me address you. Bro. I replied to you. I am saying to you, it wasn't Paul. It was Jesus himself who fulfilled the old laws. Didn't say Jesus say that in the Bible? Have you have you do seen? Do you the guys follow all the laws of Moses? No. Do Christians follow why? the laws of Moses? Why? why Can not? you tell me why? Why? Do you, you know why better. Not? You know Christianity better. When when why? Jesus when Jesus in Matthew when Jesus in Matthew I think chapter five verses seventeen and uh, eighteen he talked about not not a not a dot not a jittle will change from the law unless and until you follow yes, the law like the, uh, the, the, the the Pharisees you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Nothing will change un until the until the day of judgment. Brother, brother, brother. Uh, of course, brother, I'm paraphrasing the, the, wait, the, wait, wait, the verse. Wait, I can't wait, remember wait. it. No, no. Here, here. You see the screen? <clears throat> I, I can't. I, I, I'm outside. You should. Okay, let me read it for you. Okay, this is Matthew 5. People in the audience can read it. Matthew 5, verses 17 to 20. Right? If we continue, we can read the following. Christ came to fulfill the law. 17 this is it starts with verse 17 right do not think says jesus this is jesus talking do not think that i have come to abolish the law or the prophets no no i have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them so who fulfilled did paul fulfill or jesus fulfilled did jesus fulfill the old mosaic laws and the covenant yes or? i'm sure and he and he expected you to keep it where does it say that i i will give you a thousand dollar I will give you a thousand dollar if if the text say that. Go ahead. Show In me. the next text. Where? The next the next verse. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Did exactly. you accomplish it? What who who is who accomplished it? Me or Jesus? You guys, you guys. No, why are you lying? Who fulfilled the law? Did we do it or Jesus? Okay, then read the next passage. He says, Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches and so on you see he's yeah. asking you that to complete the law to live the law but you guys abolished it because of false teachings where does it say paul's teachings abdul 
this is history, my friend. If you look at Paul's works, he he's asking you to only follow the two commandments. You are actually, you are actually, you are actually, you are actually have no shame. Have no dignity. Again, who fulfilled the law? Did we fulfill the law? Did Paul fulfill the law of Jesus? Who? No, he abolished it. No, he didn't. He said, "I don't." Get away, man! Really? Did you came to waste my time? You have truly no shame. We abolish this. He's, Jesus is saying, do not think I've come to abolish the law. Did Jesus say I abolished it? You filthy liar. You see, guys, you see why we cannot be patient with liars? Do you see it? He's an idiot, man. You, wanna, you want me to talk to an idiot? You want me to talk to a liar and deceiver? You see why I called him the... Slayer of the truth. You see the taqiyah. You see how is he doing mental gymnastics? He is tap dancing and changing our holy Bible. Who is changing the holy Bible? You, you filthy coward! You are, you are nothing but an agent of Satan, man. And on top of that, you are lying about us in your Quran. Why are you lying, man? Where are you lying? Why are you lying about the Christians, man? Do you have any shame in you? No, clearly Muhammad, the fabricator of the Quran, had no shame, had no dignity. And not only that, you are even changing the, the text while the proof is in front of you. Jesus did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. He came full to fulfill the law and the prophets. What? Why the prophets? Because the prophets made prophecies about the coming of Jesus. The book of Daniel, Abraham, Moses, all of them wrote about Jesus. And yes, we still follow the Ten Commandments. We follow the Ten Commandments. We are still following the Ten Commandments. Right? The law, guys, the law are the Mosaic law, right? The 613 Mosaic law. Right? Those are not for us. We are not under those laws because Jesus fulfilled them. Right? He says, I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. What? The laws and the prophecies of the prophets. Right? Remember when Jesus said the following. Let me show you guys. Let me show you what Jesus said about Moses. Take notes, guys. Look what Jesus is saying. Why he fulfilled the prophets? Because this. Here Jesus is in John 5, guys. John 5, verse 46. He says, If you believe Moses, if you believed Moses, you would believe me. For he, Moses, wrote about me. Jesus. So this is why Jesus said, in Matthew 4, sorry, Matthew 5, verse 17 to 20, I have come not to abolish the law. Don't think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophecies of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill the laws and the prophecies. Right? And we showed you how Jesus says, if you believed in Moses, you Believe in me, for he wrote about me. Why would Moses wrote about Jesus? Because Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of Man. Guys, whenever you see the, the, these three words, the Son of Man, that means Jesus claiming deity. Right? Jesus claims deity. The Son of Man who will come and ride the clouds of heaven. Right? As Jesus fulfilled that. Anyway, may Allah, no, no, I don't believe in your Allah. Allah is not my God. You forgot to say Allah, right? Anyway, may Allah guide you. No, I don't believe in Allah, so Allah should not guide me, right? And by the way, according to the Quran, Allah is making me doing this. Allah misguided me to expose his man-made cult and his agent Muhammad, the agent of Satan, because Allah is no one else than Satan. Yes, he's the Messiah, not the son of Allah in the divine way. Are you sure, brother? Then why battle slayer? Why did King David, why did King David 
call the Messiah his Lord? Why did King David call the Messiah his Lord? <laughs> Why did King David call the Messiah his Lord? Be right back. Yeah, keep driving like Abbas. Keep driving, brother. Keep driving. So you see, guys, we showed you, we showed you how this guy is nothing but a liar. He lied about Muhammad. He lied about his own prophet, calling his prophet a liar. Right? Because last time he said, no, Ghulam and Zakiya doesn't mean holy, sinless. No, it does mean holy, sinless, and the proof is in front of you. No child is born, but he is pricked by Satan, according to your prophet. And he begins to weep because of the pricking of Satan. Except who? Except, again, brother, except who, brother? Except the son of Mary and his mother. Except Isa. Aha! This is why Isa is with Allah and his sex brothel called Jannah? Yes, brother. Aha! Now I see. And to make it even more worse, right? To make it even more worse. To make it even more worse. Just a second, guys. I am responding to a message. Just a second. So to make it even more worse, guys. The Prophet said from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6614. Let me give you the link. Right? Take notes. Take notes. The following. The Prophet said, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Moses said to Adam, O oh Adam, says Moses. So here Moses is speaking. O oh Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise, says Moses. So he's blaming Adam for being kicked out of the Islamic brothel of Allah. Right? Here Moses is attacking Adam actually. Then Adam said, look what Adam is going to say. Guys, pay attention. Then Adam said to him, to who? To Moses. O oh Moses, Allah favored you with his talk, i.e. what? The Torah, right? So he gave you the Torah, direct talk to you. Why did Allah did not directly talk to Muhammad? Let it go, uh, Muslims. Let it go. Why did Allah not directly talk to uh, Muhammad? Because clearly Muhammad is a fake prophet. So he needed a demon like Jibreel to squeeze him in that cave. Like grave. Squeeze, brother. Keep squeezing him, brother. Right? So Moses favor was favored directly with the talk of Allah. And he wrote the Torah for you. Aha. Uh -huh. I see. So he wrote the Torah for you with his hand, his own hand. Then Adam, look what Adam is saying, guys. Let me show you how Adam is actually confirming Adam here. Adam is confirming that there is no free will in Islam. This is not me talking. This is the prophet of Islam talking, right? So Adam says, now is Adam is going to refute Moses. Adam saying, do you, Moses, blame me? Do you, Moses, blame me for action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before my creation? Did Adam had anything in this? Did Adam had any saying in this? No, there is no free will for Adam. Allah made him do that. Allah wrote it on him 40 years before his creation as faith. Faith is Qadr, right? In Arabic, faith. Allah wrote it on him to sin. So Adam 
refuted or confuted Moses. Adam confuted and refuted Moses three times. Do you see it? Muhammad always repeat himself three times. Brother, where is the free will in Islam? Brother, you are correct, Rob Christian, brother. There is no free will in Islam and the proof is in front of you. So here, Adam refuted Moses by saying to him, it's, don't blame me, brother. Moses, brother, don't blame me. Allah wrote this for me to sin 40 years before my creation. Where's the free will, brother? Aha! Uh -huh. Thank you for showing me that the relation between Allah and Muslims is nothing but a master to his slave. The slaves that have no free will in Islam. Because one day Allah will decide for you that maybe Allah can remove you out of Islam. Where is your, your free will to stay in Islam, brother? Well, there is no free will because Allah can decide to do whatever he pleases. He is the puppet master and you are the puppet in his hands, right? He is the puppet master. Allah is the puppet master. Brother. Right? Allah is the puppet master. In Islam, brother. Do you see it? Allah is puppet master, brother? Yes, brother. Do you have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Hello? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Imam? Who wants to call us and refute us? I don't want kids who waste my time, brother. Okay. Where are the Islamic heroes, where are the Islamic Ustas from Indonesia and Malaysia to call me, to refute me? Guys, please keep our admins in your blessings. They are always doing an amazing job. Keep us in your prayers. Don't forget to subscribe if you are already not done so. Smash that like button, destroy it. Destroy it like it's demon possessed like Muhammad and click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Any Ustaz who can refute me, my today's teaching? Any Ustaz who can actually prove to us that Islam is the truth? No, please don't send me kids. I have no time for kids, only the educated ones. If you call yourself a practicing Muslim and you care about the truth and you want to have a respectful discussion, we are here. We are here. We are live. Call us. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Exactly, Red R Admiral. In Islam, Red Admiral, you said, let me read first your comment. We have free will. It will be our choice if we do good or bad. But we will have to answer in front of Jesus, who will show us our life at Judgment Day. Exactly, bro. In Christianity, in the Bible, there is something called free will. Free will was given to us when God told us, you can do whatever you want in the Garden of Eden, but don't eat from that forbidden tree. Don't eat from the forbidden fruit. You can eat from everything, everything you can do there. But don't eat from the forbidden fruit. So there, from that moment, God gave us the free will to either listen to him, listen to his rules, or go against him. But here we showed you that Adam had no say at all when Allah wrote the sin on him. Allah wrote on him the sin that he will commit 40 years before his creation. And the proof is in front of you. So like we said, guys, Muslims are nothing but puppets in the hands of Allah, the puppet master. They have no free will. Allah says so, you 
Allah says, stand up, you stand up. Allah says, sit down, you sit down. Where is the free will? Brother, so you're nothing but robots in Islam. This is why you are nothing but slaves. You Muslims are nothing but slaves. In Christianity, guys, we worship God, right? But that's not the only relationship with our God. We are children of God. We got the free will from God, right? We can choose to sin. We can choose to go against God. We can choose to become atheist. We can sin. I can go on the street and sin. But in Islam, Allah is the one who is causing you to sin. That's a huge difference. This is why God of the Bible is not God of the Quran. Proof is in front of you. Our God cannot be the God of the Islam, of the Quran. It's an insult to call Allah God of the Holy Bible. It's an insult to call Muhammad a prophet of the Holy Bible. It's an insult for God to call Muhammad a prophet like Abraham and Moses. God forbid, you are insulting God, the living God of the Holy Bible, when you call Muhammad a prophet. He is actually nothing but the prophet of Satan. He is the agent of Satan. Yeah, and Allah wants you to sin, exactly. Allah wants you to sin, except Isa, right? The, the son of Mary. So Allah wants you to sin. Guys, let us go further, okay? To not, to not keep it, you know, or make it boring for you. Let us go to Sunan Ibn Majah. Are you still with me, guy? I hope I didn't put you asleep. I hope our teaching today is not boring. Are you still with us, guys? Did, you, did I put you asleep? Did I put, a, put you asleep? We have 170 people watching. How many people are still awake i know it's very late in in asia right parts of asia it's very late yes exactly uh, in chapter 931 it's nothing but lies exactly and by the way i didn't finish it right because the guy called me so here we showed you before we go to the hadith guys i you know when we say something we need to finish it thank you for reminding me uh, that shinabi thank you so here, here, the Quran is lying about the Christians, right? There's nothing called uh, uh, the, the, the monks and the teachers uh, changed and whatnot. And, uh, you know, Muhammad, whenever he gets spanked, he's going to lie and add stuff, right? So Muhammad was nothing but a liar. And to, to try to fix his mistake in the Quran, he's adding, right? He's adding in the hadith. So you are you're not telling us anything new. Of course, Muhammad will try to save his behind. He's spanked behind because here he busted himself when he fabricated the ayah. He's going to try to fix and say, you know, uh, 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 the, the monks and the, and the scholars in Christianity, they changed the Holy Bible. I will give you a thousand dollar if you can show me from the Quran. I will give you a thousand dollar from... Now, right here, right now, if you can show me from the Quran how the Bible was corrupted. Show me one ayah where it says the Bible is corrupted. I will give you a thousand dollar. This is my promise to you. I will give you a thousand dollar if you can show me one ayah. I'm not asking for ten ayahs. I'll give you a thousand dollar if you can show me from the Quran where it says that the Holy Bible is corrupted. Where the Gospel is corrupted, where the Torah is corrupted. And here, Abdul Haliga, one of the admins, he adds a thousand dollar more. So you will get two thousand dollars, Muslims. Call me. We are alive. We will give you two thousand dollars if you can show us one eye where it says that the Holy Bible is corrupted. Go ahead. Call me. We are alive. Call me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. The Rob Christian without separation. Call me. I'm waiting. Yalla ya akhwan, yalla ya akhwan, call me. Why are you hiding Farid, Fifi, Fifi, Shushu, 
Mimi, where are you? Crickets. Someone's saying crickets. Sounds of the crickets. Brother, we have more than 170 people watching. Oh, now it's 163. Okay, maybe some Asians went to sleep. I understand that. I respect that. We have 163 people watching and no Muslim can refute me. Wow. No Muslim can show us how the Quran speaks of the so-called corruption of the Bible. Yalla ya akhwan. Where are you? Yalla yalla, come on. Come on, call me man, call me. So, here Muhammad is lying about the Jews, uh, sorry about the Christians, saying that we are worshipping our scholars and monks and we made them, associated them as partners, as lords besides Allah. This is lie number one. Right? Lie number one. Take notes. Chapter 9, Ayah 31. And according to this, if we go to the Arabic, it says, besides, instead, besides, Allah and al Messiah. What? Are you telling me that Allah and the Messiah are gods in Islam now? Yes, brother. Allah and the Messiah are the real gods. Right? Allah, Allah, plus the Messiah, Al Messiah, right? Al Messiah, that's how they call him, Al Messiah, are the real lords. Right? So here, Muhammad, instead of doing damage control, he make it even more worse. Do you see it? So who are the real lords? Allah and the Messiah. Right? Because it says, besides Allah wal Messiah. Right? And many Muslims don't know this, guys. Can you show me one person, guys, in the Quran? Can you show me one person? I'm talking about a human, one person that has the title Al. Like Allah, Al. Guys, here, Al Messiah, right? The Messiah, the Messiah, got the title Al. Why? Because he's divine. The Messiah is divine. He shares the same title as Allah. Do you see it? Al Messiah. Is Muhammad called Al Muhammad? Yeah, God Messiah, exactly. Is Muhammad called Al Muhammad in the Quran? Yeah, Allah is the real name, exactly the Laura. Bam! Ding 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 ding! You hit the lottery. La is the real name. Real name of the Islamic moon idol. Right? La is the real name of the Islamic room, uh, moon idol. The or El is a, is a title. Why? Because here, El, go to the Hebrew, you will see that El means God. But in the modern translation, you know, in the English, uh, sorry, in the Arabic, it becomes The, right? El means The. The La, The, La, that's the real name, La. Not Allah, there's nothing called Allah. It's El La, right? And it's El Masih. So here, Muhammad gave the Messiah the divine title in the Quran. Muhammad is not called El Muhammad, no. El Masih. It's El Masih. Why? Because El Masih is Lord's besides Allah, as you see. He is Lord's besides Allah. Bam! This is how you address chapter 9, ayah 31. You see it? I hope you took notes, guys. This is how you can deal with chapter 9, ayah 31.
right? Do we have any Muslim? Do you have any Muslim? No Muslim? Brada. No Muslim, brada. Okay. Guys, Muslims have always an issue. Muslims have always an issue with Jesus coming in the flesh as God. Right? They have an issue with Jesus. When we say Jesus is God in the flesh, he's 100% human, 100% God, right? He has two natures, he has two wills. He has the nature as human, he is man, 100% man, and he's 100% God, right? Jesus has two natures. He's 100% man, he is 100% God. He has two wills, right? That's the Christian teaching. But Muslims don't look in the mirror, they don't take out the needle from their eyes, and here is why. Here is why. This is Sunan ibn Majah. Sunan ibn Majah. Hadith number 3781. Sunan ibn Majah. Hadith number 3781. Let me give you the link. And we're going to show you that Muslims don't take the needle out from their eyes first to attack us when we say Jesus is God in the flesh. As said in John 1, 1 to John 1, 14. Right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Glory to His name. Glory to that Word. Right? So Jesus is the eternal Word of God that already existed in the beginning with God, and He is God because He is the Word of God, and the Word is God, was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. That's Jesus. So if you go to this hadith, this is Hassan. Don't say this is weak, this is life. No, brother, no. Brother, this is Hassan? Yes, brother. Speaking from Kif, Hiro, Hiro. This is Hassan, Hassan, Hassan. Okay. The Quran, right? Muhammad said, this is not me talking, this is Muhammad. The Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man. What? The Quran will become a man and a pale white man? What? What? Brother, the Quran will become a man and Muslims don't have an, an issue with that? But they have an issue with Jesus as the eternal word of God in the flesh? Brother. Double standard much, brother? Yes, brother. So the Quran will become a man? The, the Quran will speak? But they don't have an issue with this. But they have an issue with Jesus as the eternal word of God in the flesh. You see the double standard, guys. You see the double standard in Islam, guys. The Quran will become a man. He will become a man, a pale man, <laughs> and he will speak and say, I am the one that kept you awake at night, awake at night, and made you thirsty during the day. Wow! You don't have a problem with the Quran becoming a man, but you have a problem with Jesus being God, becoming a man? God in the flesh, but you have, you don't have a problem. You see the double standard, guys. Hill slides as a pale man. Low, why? Well, you tell me. I don't know, man. You tell me. Why are Muslims such hypocrites, munafiqun? Why are you such munafiqun, ya muslimin? You are a munafiq, ya muslim. Ya akhwan, you are munafiqin. You are hypocrites. Shame on you. You have no shame, you have no dignity, Muslims. You don't see the problem in Islam that the Quran, that is the uncreated, right? The Quran, when you ask a Muslim, Quran is uncreated, it's eternal, right? It's not created, it's uncreated. 
they are elevating the Quran to the level of Allah, right? Because Allah, when you ask a Muslim, is Allah created or uncreated? They say Allah is uncreated. Is the Quran created or uncreated? It's uncreated. Okay, so you are telling me that Allah and the Quran are uncreated eternal beings? Yes, brother. And the Quran is actually a being. It will become a man. And it will speak. So, how many gods are in Islam? We showed you Al-Masih is equal with Allah. We showed you from chapter 48, ayah 9, that you have to glorify and worship Muhammad every morning and evening. So we have Allah, we have Al-Masih, we have Muhammad, right? Allah, Al-Masih, Muhammad, and we have the uncreated Quran that is on the same level of Allah and he will become a man and speak. Yeah, Quran will become flesh, yeah, pale flesh. But they have a problem with us when we say Jesus is God in the flesh. Double standard, munafiqoon, hypocrite, Muslims. You Muslims need to take the needle out of your eye first, then, then dare to attack our God in the flesh. You see it guys? Don't even dare to attack the Trinity. When you have so many gods in Islam. How many gods are there in Islam, people? Bam! Shame on you. Muslims, deal with this. Eat it, swallow it, but don't forget to digest it. And the proof is in front of you. Wow, guys, not only that, not only that, when we ask Muslims, when we ask Muslims, right, when we ask Muslims, does Allah enter his creation? What is the answer of the Muslims, guys? When we ask Muslim, does Allah enter his creation or is he above his creation? What do you think their answer will be? The answer is no. Thank you, Red Armour. Right? So when we ask Muslims, does Allah enter his creation? They say no. Yeah, the Quran is actually God. Yeah, because, you know, he can speak on behalf. He, he will intercede. Right? Exactly. So does Allah enter his creation? They say no. Why no? Because Allah is above his creation, according to the Muslim scholars. But wait a second. Wait a second. I went to islamqna.info guys, let me give you the link, islamqna.info, official Sunni Salafi website, and the sheikh of this website is Sheikh Muhammad Salih al Munajid. and he says the following, and he's talking about Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, and someone is asking a question about if this hadith is Sahih. He says, this hadith is a sahih hadith. Guys, pay attention. I gave you the link. You can open up, bookmark it, save it. It says, this sahih is sahih, brother. Sahih hadith, which is proven in the soundest two books after the book of Allah, which is the Quran. It was narrated by Bukhari in his sahih, hadith number 11, 45, and by Muslim, sahih Muslim, hadith number 12, 61, from Abu Huraira, that Muhammad, the Prophet, guys pay attention, take notes, that the Prophet said, the Prophet said, the Prophet of Islam said, this is not me talking, this is Muhammad talking, the Lord Allah descends every night to the lowest heaven when one third of the night remains and says, who will call upon me? that I may answer him. So actually Allah, as you see, actually does enter his creation because heaven is the creation of Allah. Bam! Why are you such liars, Muslims? Why do you dare to say that Allah does not enter his creation? Well, the proof is in front of you from Sahih Muslim, from Sahih Bukhari, right? This is Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, from Muhammad saying, Allah descends every night to the lowest heaven. 
So Allah actually enters his creation because heaven is the creation of Allah. Why are you such hypocrite liars Muslims? Why you Muslims are such hypocrite liars? Why? Do you have any shame? Do you have any dignity? Are you calling Muhammad a liar? Because this is Muhammad speaking. Is Muhammad a liar for saying that Allah enters his creation every night and he enters the lowest heaven because heaven is a creation of so-called all. Take notes, people. Take notes. Take notes. Let it sink, Muslims. Let it sink. You have been taught by your shuyukh, by your imam, by your ustaz, that Allah does not enter his creation. He's above Al-Arsh, right? He's above his throne. But here in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, it says that Allah enters his creation. So here Muhammad actually made huge poo-poo and he contradicted himself. Every time Muhammad speaks, he contradicts himself. Where are the shuyukh? Ya ustaz, ya imam, why are you not calling me? Where are the Muslim heroes? Where is Fifi when you need him? Oh, I think Fifi is doing response videos about Christian Prince. <laughs> oh man. Someone is saying wrecked. What does wrecked mean, man? Is that uh, spanked? Is that is that refuted? What does that mean? Is that a new... I think that's a new uh, modern word for spanked, right? Yeah, spanked, wrecked. Okay, okay. Yeah, we have at least 13 Muslims who are watching, right? We have 13 dislikes. And I think one of them is at least a sheikh. We know, we know the Muslims are watching, we know. So here Muhammad gets busted again, lying. One time in the Quran he says, Allah, uh, somewhere he says, Allah is above his throne, right? Allah is above his throne, he's above the creation. But here in Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari is saying that Allah enters his creation, he descends to the lowest heaven. Not only that, not only that guy. Let me show you from the Quran to make it, make it even more worse for Muhammad and his fake Allah, his fake moon idol. Okay. Let me show you. <clears throat> Let me show you. Can I make this bigger? Yeah. Someone is asking, guys, if we go to Surah Al Araf of the Quran, verse 143, read with me. Guys, this is Quran, okay? This is Quran. When Moses came to the place, when Moses came to the place appointed by us, who? Allah. Suddenly, Allah is us. Allah is us? How many Allahs do you have? I mean, uh -huh, now I understand when Allah says in chapter 1, please guide us through the straight path. Is Allah praying to another Allah? Allahu A'lam. So he Allah is suddenly us. Allah is us. And his Lord addressed him. His Lord Allah addressed him. He said, Moses said, now is Moses speaking. Suddenly, Moses speaking in the Quran. You see how many people are speaking in the Quran? But uh, Muslims, last time we checked, Muslims always say, Quran is the speech of Allah. No, it's also the speech of Moses, as you see. The jinns are speaking in the Quran. Jesus is speaking in the Quran. Many people speak in the Quran. 
but uh, it's the speech of Allah, brother. Makes sense, brother. Makes sense. Then Moses said, O oh my Lord, show me, show thyself to me. Show me yourself, Moses is saying. So Moses is asking Allah, the, the Islamic Moses is asking the Islamic Allah to show himself. Guys, are you with me? Yeah, this is chapter, I believe this is chapter 7, right? Chapter 7 from Ayah 143. So Moses is saying, Oh my Allah, <laughs> Oh my Allah, show me, show you to me, show yourself to me, that I may look upon thee. So Moses wants to see Allah and ask Allah to show himself. Then Allah says, by no means can you see me directly. So you can't see me in person, right? You can't see me directly. But look upon the mountain, right? If it abide in its place, then show, then shall thou see me. And here comes the disaster. Guys, here comes the disaster. Again, Allah enters his creation and says, when his Lord manifested his glory on the mountain. Bam! Allah manifest himself on the mountain. And Muhammad stole this directly from the Holy Bible. Allah manifest himself on the mountain, brother? Yes, brother. Brother. Muslims always told us that Allah does not enter his creation. But the mountain is the creation of Allah, brother. So here, Allah again, for the second time, Allah enters creation. And Allah is in the tree, Allah is in the fire, over and over and over again, Allah enters his creation. Allah enters the trees, Allah enters the fire, Allah enters the mountain. Manifesting himself on the mountain. Tajalla ala jabal. Right? Tajalla ala I think the, if we go to the Arabic, I don't think it's even talking about uh, the glory. Let me go uh, actually to, to the Quran itself and see if they are using taqiyah in a translation. Just a second, guys. That's, you know, you know me. When we talk, we need proof. Okay, so the Arabic does not say glory. You know, before, uh, you know, you have some smart, smart Muhammadans. If we go to the Quran, let me go to the Quran, guys. You will see the, uh, the disaster in the translation. Guys, are you with me? Take notes. If you go to the translation, you will see it says, Allah manifested his glory to the mountain, which is a lie. It doesn't say in the Arabic, it doesn't say in the Arabic, glory. You see the false translation, guys? You see why we always say, why Christian Prince, why Rob Christian always tell you, don't trust any translation? It says, فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ Right? When Allah manifested himself to the mountain. Lil Jabal, right? He manifested himself to the mountain. On the mountain. It doesn't say glory. You liars. You deceivers. Yes, to the mountain. Not, he didn't manifest his glory to the mountain. He manifested himself to the mountain. You Muslims have no shame. You have no dignity when you translate the Quran of Allah. You see how they use taqiyya? Brother, why don't you trust Sahih International, brother? Because you're liars, brother, when you translate Quran, brother. Now I understand why Muslims always say, go to the Arabic, brother. Because of the, of the taqiyya, brother? Yes, brother. Yeah, I think CP is translating the Quran. If you want to have a really close translation, guys, Check out the translation by Osama Dagduk. He's a Christian. I think he's an Egyptian Christian. He's a Coptic Christian. 
and he already translated the Quran, but it's not a really a perfect translation, but it's much better than this false translation. So Muhammad's Allah translate uh, manifested فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ When he, Allah, manifested himself, right? When the Lord of Moses manifested himself to the mountain. That's what the Arabic says. It does not say glory. You know? But in the translate in the translation they fix right fix fix glory fix see it doesn't say his glory you liars it says but when his lord manifests to the mountain remove his glory guys let us play a little let us play a little let's see if there's a good translation Let's see. Again a lie. So Maududi lying. Maududi is lying. You filthy liar. Let's see about Arbery. Let us do a test, guys. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, here. This is more close. Do you see the the taqiyah? This guy is more more honest. Arbery is more honest. He it says here, and when his lord revealed himself to the mountain no again it does not say revealed it says manifested so basically he's a liar too let us continue what about ahmed ali you see the taqiyya guys okay we can we can go with this can we go with this translation guys what do you think about this translation when his lord appeared on the mountain Tajalla means manifest. You know, this looks okay. It's not perfect translation, but it's okay. So here, Allah enter his himself, and Allah enters his creation. And not only that, he manifest himself on the mountain. What about Ahmad Riza? Let's see. This guy is doing more poo-poo. This guy is even doing more poo-poo. So when his Lord directed his light on... <laughs> you filthy liar. You Ahmed Riza Khan, you're a filthy liar. What about Hilali Khan? Let's see this guy. Okay, this guy is doing copy-paste from the other guy. Appeared. Is there any translation who is not lying? What is this? Itani Allah, what is that? Let's see about this one. Ah, uh, this one is good. Do you see guys how Rob Christian is not lying to you? Guys, do you see how Rob Christian is not lying to you? Here we have a good translation for this ayah. But when his Lord manifested himself to the mountain. Do you see it? Do you see how Rob Christian is not lying? Guys, do you see how Rob Christian did not lie to you? Right? But when his Lord manifested himself to the mountain. Does Allah enter his creation, brother? Yes, Allah enters his creation. Because the mountain, like the heaven, while well, Allah descends to the lowest heaven, again Allah enters his creation. Do you see it? You Muslims have to deal with these problems in Islam, brother. You Muslims have to deal with the problems in Islam. This is why, guys, we wanted to teach about this very topic. Guys, if you like our teaching, please subscribe. Smash that like button. Don't forget to like this video, guys. And click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Oh, we always thank you for your support, guys. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for all your support for the last year that we are doing this, doing videos and live shows. Without you, we cannot do this. Please keep us in your prayers. 
Keep the admins in your prayers who are always doing an amazing job. And for the people who are asking for reference, uh, our admins put the reference in under the comment section, okay? You can find the reference for our teaching today in the comment section. We always paste, post the reference of the teaching in the comment section, okay guys? So if you wanna check out the reference that we use today, go and see it, find it in the comment section. All right, guys? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Who dares to call us and refute our teaching? Mayday, mayday. Speaking from Kiev, Hira, Hira, Hira. Is there, is there any Ustaz, Ustaz, Ustaz from Indonesia, Indonesia, Indonesia? Any Imam, Imam, Imam? Where are they, man? Where are you hiding, brother? Brother? What does Allahu Akbar mean? Allah and Akbar. The sun. Because if me guys something happened. Refresh guys, refresh. Please refresh. Guys, please refresh the correct way. Right? Allah Akbar. Else you should have said Allah Huwa al Akbar. Right? Allah Huwa al Akbar. That means Allah is the great one or greater. Allah, He is the one who is greater. Right? So Allah Hu Akbar. Allah. Wa Akbar is Allah and uh, his wife, the son. Allah, his wife. Okay, without the... <laughs> okay, I made a typo. So Allah, you get the idea. Allah and his wife, the son. Allah wa Akbar. Else, they should say Allah huwa al-Akbar. Huwa means he is. So Allah wa Akbar, that's what they say actually. That's what Muslims say, Allah wa Akbar. Allah and Akbar. They eat words actually, they eat words. Allahu Akbar, no, it's Allah, there's nothing called Allahu. It's Allah, right? So they put something... Uh, <laughs> Besides Allah, again, destroying the name of Allah. They should say, Allah huwa al-Akbar. Right? Allah huwa, he is al-Akbar. So when they say it like this, Allah Akbar, that means it's Allah and Akbar, the wife of the moon idol, the sun. Right guys? Did you catch it? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Is there any Ustaz? Is there any Imam? My Skype ID is D Rob Christian. Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Imam? Do we have any Muslim caller who dares to call us? Right here, right now, we are live. Rob, you're a coward. You're finished, brother. <clears throat> yeah, kissing a, kissing a black stone or touching it is not pagan. Well, actually, it is pagan. You know why? When we ask Muslim, why do you kiss black stones? They say we kiss it because the Prophet kissed it, brother. But why? 
Well, according to the hadith, the black stone absorbs sin. It used to be white, but because of the sins of mankind, it became black. So it seems that the black stone can forgive sins. How many gods do you have in Islam, guys? When we ask Muslims, who can forgive sins? Allah, brother. So then, automatically, the black stone is also God in Islam. How many gods do you have in Islam? Brother, certainly Islam is not a pagan religion, right, Muslims? Yasin adds, Yasin, yeah, you are calling upon, you are invoking, right, basically. When you say, yeah, you are invoking. And seen is another name for Allah, the moon idol. Right? Ya, you are invoking. Ya Rob, right? Ya Rob, you are invoking me. You are calling upon me, right? Ya, seen. Ya Allah, or basically Ya God seen. Seen is another name or title for the moon idol. Right, brother? Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. That's what Yasin means. You're invoking, you're invoking seen. Hello, message of love. Nice to have you here, sister. Guys, we have a dear sister who has an amazing YouTube channel. She always downloads our videos, right? She downloads our videos because you never know. One day, YouTube might decide to take us down, to shut us down. So make sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel too. Her name is Message of Love. You can click on her name and subscribe to her YouTube channel. She always downloads our videos of the Warriors and she uploads them on her YouTube channel. There's another gentleman. His name is Shake Your Booty. He always downloads our videos too and uploads them too on his YouTube channel. So you never know. You never know what YouTube might decide someday, right? So to still find our videos, you can go and see them there too. Do we have any Muslim guys? Do we have any Muslim who dares to call us? Don't tell me there are no Muslims. No, 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 brother. We have around 160 people watching. 160 people watching. At least one of them is a Muslim. So if you think you have the courage and the knowledge to refute me, we are here, we are live, call me. My Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Look, my Skype ID is open. My Skype is open. Call me. Let's see if this kid will pick up the phone. So he called me earlier. Pick up, pick up. Brother, pick up the phone, brother. Oh, brother. I think he, this gentleman forgot to do ablution. Always make sure to do ablution. Say, inshallah, three times before you call us. Or pick up the phone, brother. Else Allah will not help you. Yeah, brother. Do evolution, brother. And say inshallah three times before you pick up the phone. Else Allah is not with you. <sighs> Guys, I think we had a good teaching today. We did uh, some amazing damage. We showed you how Muslims are actually in denial. Right? They are in denial. They don't study their sources. They only follow what their teachers, their ustas, their imam actually tell them. You see here we have a Muslim lady with her fingers on her eyes, nose, mouth and ears. That's what actually Muslims are in 2020. They are deaf, blind, they don't hear, they don't listen, they only follow. They are nothing but robots. And we showed you. You are in Islam, you are nothing but a puppet in the hands. You are a puppet in the hands of Allah. 
Allah, one day he can decide to throw you out of Islam. Allah can do whatever he pleases with you. You are nothing but a puppet. He is your master, you are his puppet in his hands. Adam had no say, Adam had no free will to choose to sin or not. Allah made it happen on him. Allah made uh, sorry Adam sin 40 years before his creation. Allah wrote that sin on him. So where is the free will in Islam Muslims? Why are you accepting that you are nothing but a puppet in the hands of the puppet master Allah and his agent Muhammad? Right? Wake up Muslims, wake up. Wake up. Please leave this man-made cult. Wake up, please. Uh, you have difficulties? My friend, someone is saying, I cannot find proof that sin is Allah. Are you sure? Here is, here is proof, brother. I, I, brother, look. Sin is the moon god. That's what I typed in Prophet Google, right? This is Prophet Google, brother. You see? Prophet Google always provide. Sin is Akkadian. It's very old, by the way. This, these are the Assyrians, basically, right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah. The Akkadians are the Assyrians. They are Sumerians. Sumerian Nana. In Mesopotamian religion, right? Mesopotamia, guys, is basically... Uh, nowadays, Iraq, Syria, right? Iraq, Syria, Turkey, that place, right? And the God of the moon. So sin is who? The God of the moon. Did you see it? Did you catch it? Sin is the God of the moon, brother. I mean, how can you not find it, bro? Sin was the father of the sun god. So he's actually the supreme one idol of the Mesopotamians, the Assyrians. See, he's the moon god, actually. He's like Allah. Allah is the supreme moon idol, right? Yeah, Abraham's native country, exactly. Abraham comes from Ur, right? He comes from nowadays Iraq. And Muhammad, actually, guys, Muhammad confused the father of Abraham, whose real name is Terah, right? Terah is the real name of the father of Abraham. Muhammad confused him and he thought that his name was Azar, right? Azar is actually an Aramaic word, right? Azar is an Aramaic for, word for someone who is stupid, a fool, right? So... Abraham called his father a fool for worshipping pagan idols. So Muhammad thought that Azar is actually the name of the father of Abraham. No, the real name of the father of Abraham is Terah. There's nothing called Azar. It's not Muhammad, fake prophet. Of course he's going to lie and get confused about such historical facts. Do you have any Muslim? Or should we wrap this up, guys? So today we showed you many disasters, i.e. problems in Islam. And no Muslim could have refuted us today. God is good. God is with us. We are only showing the truth. We don't hate Muslims. Muslims, we really don't hate you. We Christians do not hate you. We only show you the truth about your fake man-made religion and your fake prophet. Allah is no one else than Satan. Allah is no one else than Satan. And Muhammad is the agent of Satan. Please drop Muhammad. Leave Islam. Don't fear the one who is hurting your body or might hurt your body. Fear the one who might hurt your soul. Because when you're hurt... When your soul is hurt, you'll get deceived and you will enter hellfire if you don't accept the truth. 
please come back home to Jesus. Jesus claimed to be the truth. Al-Haq. Al-Haq is, by the way, one of the 99 names of Allah. Right, Muslims? Jesus claimed to be Al-Haq. Right? Ana huwa al-haq. I am the truth, said Jesus. Ana huwa al-haq. I am the truth. So please come back home to the truth who is no one else than Jesus. Please come back home to Jesus. Every knee will bow and proclaim that he is Lord. He is God. Please come back home, Muslims. Muhammad cannot help you. Muhammad could not even help his own mother and father who are now burning in hellfire. Muhammad could not even help himself. He, he, Muhammad doesn't even know what will Allah do to him. So how do you know what your salvation will be? How do you know? If your own prophet doesn't know. Please come back home to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you benefited from today's teaching. I hope you took notes. Again, if you want to get the references, Please come back in, let's say, an hour or two. Check out the live show again. Check out this video again. And you will see the references under the comment section. Thank you for watching. Keep us in your prayers. God bless you. Don't forget to like this video if you didn't already done that already by now. Subscribe and smash the like button. Click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. God bless you. God bless your families. Keep us in your prayers. Keep the admins in your prayers. Pray for the warriors. Thank you so much for your support, guys. See you, Lord willing, in a future live show again. Thank you for watching and God bless.